In 1087, William the Conqueror died, and his sons built upon the Norman foundations he had laid. But upon the death of the youngest, Henry I, England was plunged into civil war. Nineteen years of anarchy, misery and hunger, until there emerged a very different king in England, Henry Fitz Empress, that is Henry, son of the Empress. He took his father's emblem, a sprig of yellow broom or gorse, and gave its Latin name of Plantagenista, Plantagenet in French, Plantagenet in English, to the royal line that followed him, and made by sheer willpower the first empire of the English. England has had greater soldier kings and subtler diplomatists than Henry II, but no man has left a deeper mark upon our laws and institutions, said Churchill of this monarch. Beautiful. Your uncle knew good English soil when he saw it, my lord. It's very sweet to look on indeed, John. The best in the county. I know. I worked it before I was my own man. And one day, John, one day it will be mine. Aye. A day not far off, by all accounts. You'd be last at your own funeral, Richard Anstey. Not dead yet. He will be if you hesitate. Hush, wife. Well, I'll be on my way. There be a parcel of trouble yonder. A man of Clavering be held in suspicion of robbery, and we of Anstey be summoned to be, uh, what do you call it? Jurors, is it? Jurors, by writ of the king. Beyond me, but it's the new custom. Aye, John. Yes, well, good day, John Freeman. Mistress, good day, Master Richard. Well, what are you waiting for? Little while and the old man will have set his mind and be gone from this world. Whether I see his passing or not, the land is mine as next heir. That is the law. Law? Law? Possession is the law. Hush, woman. If there be any law, it says that you are a scold and may be punished for it. I speak for your good, husband. For your good. Come, then. And in Jesus' name, lay hold on your tongue. Yes, husband. <laughs> Maria, Sancta Iota, Sancta Iota. A sad day, Nephilim. But in William Sackville's name and for his sake, Richard Anstey and Maud, his wife, I bid you welcome. My aunt, we thank you for his sake. Omni sancti dictipuli domini. Omni sancti innocente. Sancti tetri. Sancti Lorenzi. You've come then. Why should he not last as not least, you know? Hush, wife. Good day, Mabel. Good day, Hubert. You be well? As well as may be, cousin. Your uncle will make a good end. Let us hope so, Hubert. Well, ask him. Ask him! Has he... My uncle... Did he... What? Say anything? Well, look at him. 
Has he made his mind known, spoken his will? He needs no will. It's as clear as this day. Nothing's clear at a man's passing. It must be decided while he lives. It's decided. What was my father's will be mine. Not as far as the land goes. What? Now, look, you, Richard Anstey, are the nephew merely. On the other hand, I'm his daughter. Got from his loins, yes, but... but what more? Nothing. Now, listen to me. William de Sackville is my father. He's... First in blood, first to inherit. Do you hear? Mabel Frankville, in Christ's name, respect the presence of death. Blood you may be, Mabel, but I am first male after him, and I know my rights. Never on your grasping life. We'll see who inherits it today. <laughs> Shovels and follow me now. You speed over there. Quick's the word. Let the dead bury the dead. Be comforted, Aunt. He was a good man, a just lord to his people, and wise in managing them. Pray God I shall be the same in his place. I shall go to Holyrood at Reading for the repose of his soul and the well-being of yours. Oh, do, lady. You can claim 20 days remission of penance for that. And if you make devotion to the Holy Hand, St. James Apostle, that's at Reading, too. You can claim 40 days remission. I shall remember that. Thank you, priest. Mm. Well, there is nothing for me here now. What will you do? Return to my brother. I am his responsibility. He must dispose of me as he will. I shall conduct the stewardship of these my uncle's lands as if it were my patrimony. Should ma belle de Francheville allow you, ah. watch her. It will not be easy. Mabel! Mabel's gone! I knew Where has she gone? To dispose of the inheritance, of course. Go quickly, nephew. You may be too late. I shall build a fine hall on its summit. Possession is nine tenths of the law. You will all bear witness that I, Mabel de Francheville, daughter of the late lamented William de Secville, lay claim and do possess all those lands held by my late father. Now come, swear it. Yes, Mabel. Well, swear it. Well, we, we have nothing to swear by. Dear God, help us. Swear in the name of the Most Holy Trinity by Our Hugh Lady and all saints. doesn't swear, Hubert Frankville, nor you, Mabel, doesn't make him. Get off my land. It is not your land. It is. It is mine, and I will have it. Never I was got William's daughter. Got you were, but not between lawful sheets. Maud. God save you for that. Not by reckoning of Holy Mother Church, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Get you home, wife. Look what you've done. May Satan burn out your tongue for that slander. Why are you so persistent? You have lands enough of your own. From the Shire of Essex, as far as Surrey, you can call estates your own. You have your own domain. What more do you want? What I have a right to, my uncle's lands. And I have friends and men of influence who will give me justice. Lord Richard de Lucy. Well, Lord Richard, be our overlord too. We shall see who will win his judgments. Uh, oh, my poor Mabel. We shall soon see who is greatest with my Lord Richard Lucy, and even with my Lord the King, for that matter. But have these lands I will. Over my dead body, Richard Anstey. Over my dead body. De profundis clemavi at te domini domini. Everywhere I turn, the church. God save you, Henry Fitzemperis, you nearly did for us. You hurt? I think not, sire. We clergy, you can knock us down, but you won't knock us out. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, Beckett? A cheerful priest. Praise God, there aren't many. The Chancellor is not amused. 
Who's with the corpse then? Lord Richard de Luce's man, William de Sackville. I knew him by Christ. William de Sackville, I knew him. Poor William. Well, well. And who succeeds him? Oh, well, that, sire, you know as much as we do. Why so? There'd be a wrangle for the inheritance. Uh huh? Between whom? Between the daughter and the nephew. <laughs> I know what that means. I have a brood of my own. Well, I have laws enough for all men that will serve their purpose. Tell them to bring their cause before us and they shall be well satisfied with our justice. Tell them I say so. God bless your labours, priest. Give him a penny each, Tom. Hey! I shall not drink in peace while I pursue this case. Is that a vow? Uh, no, Master Sampson, but I shall not rest until I am satisfied. <laughs> Thank heavens, for we'd thirst to death. <laughs> and it will be some case. You do not believe in the justice of my cause? We are your servants, Master Richard. Your cause is ours. Am I right, Master Sampson? It is a just cause. Good. Then where do we begin? You will first require the King's writ permitting you to bring Marbelle de Francheville before one or other of the King's justices. And then you, Master Nicholas, will get this writ for me. I'm afraid you are compelled to follow your suit in person. Who knows where the King is? He travels a lot, they say. Well, wherever he is, I will go to him. The case will no doubt be heard here in England, Master Sampson. No doubt, Master Nicholas. Mm. Then, of course... Of course what? The Queen's seal. In the absence of the King, the Queen becomes Regent of the realm. You will need the Queen's approval. And the King's writ requires the Queen's seal. Am I right, Master Nicholas? Quite right, Master yeah. Sampson. And then may I bring Mabel to trial? No, oh, dear me, no. No? Oh, no. Your uncle's estates lie within the honour of Boulogne. Yeah. Well, who holds the honour of Boulogne of the King? Ralph Brito. Well, you, as chief tenant of the honour of Boulogne, must notify the Lord who holds the honour. Ralph Brito. And get his writ to say so. It gets worse. The worst is yet to come. Well, if there be any law in England, and God be in it, it is that I look for. Be silent for Lord Richard de Lucy, High Sheriff of Essex, justice here to our Lord the King. Who pleads here? I do, my lord. You must wait your turn. Give him three pennies. Richard de Anstey, three pence. Richard de Anstey, my lord. Anstey in Hartford? Oh, that is right, my lord. Oh, he is one of my tenants. I know the man. Come forward, Richard de Anstey. Well, Richard, what is your plea? Uh, I bring a plea against uh, Mabel Frankville for the rights and possessions of the lands pertaining to the barony of William Sackville, our late common ancestor. Do you have the King's writ to bring this appeal? Uh, this is the writ of our Lord the King to plead and his writ summoning Marbelle to the court. Sealed, as you see, with the Queen's seal, and there are witnesses to the same, if my Lord pleases. Which is Marbelle de Francheville. She doesn't appear to be here. I must have both parties present or I have nothing to hear. I will give you another day. Where? Northampton. Northampton on uh, St. Andrew's Eve. That will be all. Next. Uh, both Mabel and myself have lands in the honor of Boulogne, which honor is held by Ralph Brito of the Lord King. Have you summoned Ralph Brito? He's crossed into Normandy, my lord. Well, I shall need his writ. I will give you another day. When? Uh, the uh, 15th day of this term. That? Southampton. That will be all. Next. <laughs> Ralph Brito will swear on my behalf, and here is his writ saying so. And here is mine, and the King's writ, and the Queen's. You are Mabelle de Francheville. Yes, and my husband, Hubert de Francheville, is a witness. I am Hubert. I, that is, we, plead that in these cases of inheritance, the daughter is to be preferred before the nephew as heir. That, that being my wife. Yeah. But we cannot accept that Mabel, as the spurious issue of an adulterous marriage, can be the heir of her father. Well, Lord, this puts a different light on the matter. It is a slander. Look, give them another day. I must think about this. Two days hence. Next. Yes. A question that depends upon the canon law cannot be heard in the king's courts. Well, these things are known to the clergy, but unknown to the laity. Therefore, 
Having obtained the necessary writs, I declare this case be taken from the secular arm of the law and be presented to an ecclesiastical court. But my As lord, my we lord, have traveled... the Archbishop of Canterbury shall direct. That is all. Next! No! Oh, yes. yes! I've had enough for this day. Oh, Something for Richard's good will. That is all that is left in the treasury. Borrowed from Hackalot the Jew the sum of ten pounds, also in silver, at three pence the pound per week. Correct, Hackalot? Oh, surely. Which makes it some forty pounds you owe me, all told. Am I right? If your bonds say so, Jew. Oh, they do. No, Hackalot. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> I admire it only. Beautiful. And it assures me that you are in good case to repay me. Nothing more. All that you owe me. With interest, that is. You will be satisfied, Hackalot. Give him his bond. Good day, Jew. This pocket is stuffed with bonds of your kind. I thank God, and so should you, that there are monies in this other to keep you men of affairs content. The Lord God bless you. I can afford to be generous. By a lady, Richard Anstey, this is the fourth in as many weeks. The house crawls with Jews and moneylenders. Do you wish to ruin us? Well? You will do for us with this obsession of yours, for it has become that. Fees for this writ, fees for that. Fines to his lord the king and his wife the queen. Bribes to his clerk and fine gifts to any man who will stand one day before the justices. And now you put yourself in the hands of the Jews from whose clutches there is no escape. And for what? Hey, for a parcel of land that has become a desert for want of husbandry and the hatred of the men who should by their rights farm it. Yes, their hatred, for they cannot farm it, dare not farm it while you go on dreaming of a, of a justice not on this earth. Will you damn your immortal soul for such a proud mystery? If need be, yes. Damn yourself then, Richard Anstey, but don't beggar me by the way. Not I, Master. Well, who then? You saw. Who threw that? He'll pay with his ears. And that's all he'll have to pay with. No man has worked your uncle's land since your law matter began with Mistress Mabel. Well, she's in possession. An absent landlord she is on your account. The folk blame you for her indifference. I'm my own man, but most of them are serfs, as you know. They're tied to yonder. And who be their lord to untie them and let them go elsewhere? The devil, though, he finds labor for discontented hands. Then let them work for the devil, for my work is God's. Tell them they may repair the hurdles between the Sackville Acres and mine. On my side, that is. See, they have wood for it. My wood. <laughs> so the master of Anstey has gone to Rome. A fearful journey to a fearful place. Well, he may thrive. He may thrive. Here, take it. <sighs> Till next quarter's rent taking, there's nothing more. It will do very well. Now go, Jew. I hear that others of my fraternity expend a great deal on your account, mistress. That is none of your business. But as money lending is my business, it is right that I should know who are the good risks, who are the bad risks. We help each other. My nation holds itself together against Christian animosity. 
with such knowledge. God knows only too well what the Christian owes the Jew. On Judgment Day, mistress, I think my race will have paid with more than interest the crime you Christians accuse us of. The Lord God is just, and I praise him. The Lord God is just. The Lady Albreda owes us nothing. Now get out! There are more Jews on the road to Anstead than in all Jerusalem. Or Norwich. Demanding at my door, and I have nothing to give them. Messengers come with writings which, for ignorance, I cannot read. Dear God in heaven, what can I do? Nothing. For it is not your quarrel. And when Richard returns... Yes. I hear on the road that Henry Fitzempress has put down those lords that were set against him, and there will be a peace among them. For a time. There will be. And Queen Eleanor has gone into France to stir up her brood, no doubt. And Thomas the Chancellor is now the greatest man in England above all. Very well, niece, if you will have it so. How fares the suit at law? Oh, God. I was summoned to appear for your husband before the Archbishop. The world and his wife have been summoned on his behalf and still no settlement. And now he has gone to the Holy Father and His Rome. Holiness must say that Mabel is a bastard. I said as much before my Lord of Canterbury. But it must be confirmed by Christ's vicar himself. Well, then, with the Holy Father's guarantee, there will be a blessed outcome. My knees are raw praying for do you have some work we can do together? Hmm? When do I have time to ply a needle or money even to purchase wools? Oh. Open that chest, girl, and bring the linen from it. And the wools. Be careful, girl. Go on, look at yourself in it. That is what it is for, to see yourself in. It came from Germania, it belonged to the Emperor. You will make her vain. <laughs> Perhaps it is peace after Madame all. Maud. Thank you. Madame Maud! Madame Maud! Where is your husband? Have you not heard? In Rome. He will go that far then to prove me a bastard. Do you deny it? My lord of Canterbury was unable to prove me so. Unwilling to more like. All litigation within this realm has been held in abeyance until the wars in France are over. The wars are over. No one may plead a cause while the king is in arms. Where is your husband's duty? My husband raised his knights for these wars, as it is his duty to do, but got king's permission for the case to go forward in spite of these wars. You had better make shift, Mabel, or you may be left behind. Oh, yes, Mabel. Even now, Richard will be telling his holiness what a besom you are, a termagant, and determined to undo us. You don't deserve one pennyworth of Sackville's inheritance, much less his lands. Mm, well, you don't frighten me, madame. His holiness is enough to do caring for the souls of his faithful without endorsing falsehoods and compounding the felonies of an arrogant English ingrate. No doubt! But Richard Anstey will see your soul in hell before he will be turned from what is rightfully his. He is a stubborn and an obstinate man. That too, but he will never give up. He is not made of stone, Mabel. No. He is made of more enduring substance, spirit. So look about you. Do you threaten me? No, I'm warning you. Oh, yes, madame, you would relish my undoing. Your mother has much to answer for in heaven, should she ever get there. And there is much of her about you, Mabel. I can bear witness and do for my nephew's sake to the misery and ruin your mother brought on me. I was promised before God to your father before you were born. But through the cunning practices of your mother, William broke his oath to me and married her. The man is master. The choice is his. He chose a day, or it is his right. Not before heaven, it isn't. It was a sacred oath I had. And it was only through the good offices of my kith and kin that William gave her up in my favour. Obeying the mandate of canon law. Then they were divorced in truth. She knows it. There will always be doubt. The Pope had none. And the marriage was declared illegal before a whole synod of bishops in chapter at Great St. Paul's in London. My arguments are sufficient. But none listened to them. 
There is precedent. The children of the King of France. <laughs> they are considered legitimate and may inherit, though that king be divorced and married yet again to another, so shall it be with me. Madam Mabel, you are a no thing and a bastard by the cross. No. no. Home. Home. Husband it's home. Richards! <laughs> Master Nicholas, Master Samson, the Master is back! Fetch food and drink, oh, dear Christ! Boss. Richard! Well, you saw the Pope? Yes, I saw him. And? He has decided in my favor. Oh. 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 Mabel, why didn't you come to Rome? I do not believe you. I assure you, I saw the Pope and he heard my cause. <laughs> He, he gave me three writs in my favour. <laughs> one for the Archbishop of Canterbury, one for Lord Richard Lucy, and one, <laughs> one, one for myself, for me. No! <laughs> but there was none for my Lord the King, and he, he was very angry to be neglected, so, so <laughs> I had to demand another one for King Henry. And the Pope said when he heard it, he, he said, who does Henry Fitzemperus think he is? Will he be a second pope in England? <laughs> Another pope in England. <laughs> You're a liar. No. You hear me. Liar. 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 Speak, sweetheart, speak. Oh, my poor sparrow, heart. She's dead. Mother is dead. You killed her. Murder. Murder. Clubs and staves. Clubs and staves! John Freeman! Oh, God have mercy on us. We never met this. Never. What's to be done? Richard, you must escape. Run away. We will dispose of the body. Master Nicholas here. That's foolish talk. Richard's not to blame. None need ever know. The whole world will know by now. If he is not at fault, he has nothing to fear. It was God's judgment. That's his maybe, but it will have to be explained. There's your man, Reeve. That's him. Take him. That's the felon. Yes. I know, Master Richard, well enough. Then do your duty. You dustn't lay hands on your lord, John Freeman. He is the Reeve, and he may. Now wait, my masters. Mistress Maud, this man brings complaint against Master Richard here. For the murder no. of my wife. No. It be no problem. Well, no. look. John Freeman is only tenant here. He says it's murder, mistress. No. So perform your office. His duties to his lord, not Please to you. Let me speak. Peace, all of you. I am still master in my own hall. Now listen. Carefully. Hubert Frankville, do you bring a complaint against me? Yes. Yes, I do. On the grounds of murder. No. Quiet! <laughs> Who was slain? My wife, Mabel de Francheville. Mabel Frankville. John Freeman, come here. Who is this, John? Mistress Mabel. Be she dead? She be uncommon still. Uh, I, as far as can be told. Be she dead? Yes. Do any of you others wish to look on her? Now, you should do so, for you will all be witnesses to this. So be it. I will conduct this according to the usages and customs of our land, as it has always been done. I will see to it that there is a fair inquest and trial. Yes. 
So that you'll best me as you bested her. No, Hubert, so that justice may be done and be seen to be done. Uh, Sir Priest, uh, you are lettered and can write. You will take down the depositions of all those here present as to what they saw and heard according to their lights. Oh, well, well, well I'll like do be best. Richard. <laughs> now, John, as reeve of this hundred of Anstey, you have the power to arrest me. You must be taken by your peers, master. And if my peers are not here present, nor within earshot, will you have the king's peace disturbed and do nothing? No, I but... shall not hold it against you, John. I shall not hold it against any of you. You must uphold the law. Aye. Well, then. I arrest you, Richard Anstey and hold you in suspicion of murdering Mabel de Frankville and of disturbing the peace of our Lord the King in this hundred. You might as well have milked the cow straight on him. Look at him, ruined. Milk boy is the sworn enemy of ink and there's milk on every membrane. You're a lout, a clumsy, feckless lout. <laughs> Where is he? Oh, Empress Harris, oh dear, dear. Is it hurt? Crazy, I thought the devil had come for me. He has. Me Lord King. You again. Oh, you remember me then. I never forget a face. Why were you beating that boy? You saw? From the far end of my empire. Oh. Well? A misdemeanor. What? A little thing. Rough justice for a little thing. Oh, he's, a, he's idle, foolish, and ne'er do well. Those are sins, not crimes. And I chastise him for Not it. in my realm, you do not. No cleric lays a hand upon a layman unless that man or boy be put to the layman's laws. Hey, Tom. You clergy take a lot upon yourselves, you know. Far too much. Yes, I am. What was his cr His sin? Well, look, sir. Oh, Jesus, the deposition. Well, be there. Oh, Christ, help me. What will I do? Ah. Well, what is it? A book? What, indeed? No, sire. They're manuscripts. Documents of law, I suppose you'd call them. I wrote them and they was in my keeping. And now... What was their purpose? I'm held for the trial. Richard of Anstey is held in suspicion of murder. Oh, uh, yes. They say he has slain his cousin, one Mabel. You know? There is little I do not. Well, then, you'll realise how important these are. Or were, anyway. I do. Where does Richard stand his trial? Woodstock, sire. We was on the road there now and... <laughs> Woodstock, eh? Well, well. I suspect you to be a good gossip, priest. <laughs> I'll take you to Woodstock, and you can tell me about this murder. Give these two a place among you, and they will eat my bread. On to Woodstock! Hey. In the name of the Lord Henry Fitz Empress, King of the English, you are summoned. This be the King's Court of Assize. You will keep the King's peace in it. For our Lord the King's Chief Justice here, Lord Richard de Lucy, here present, to hear the appeal of one, Hubert de Francheville, against one, Richard de Anstey, both of the honour of Boulogne. The jurors allege that on the day following the feast of Holy Michael, the Archangel, Marbelle de Francheville, that was wife to the said Hubert, was found to be dead in the house of the said Richard, lying upon his feast board with a worked cloth upon her body. The jurors hold this Richard in suspicion of the murder of the said Marbelle. Is this appeal by the King's writ? It is. And the writ summoning these jurors? They're all good, true, and free men? So they have sworn. Proceed. Hubert de Francheville. Do you, Hubert, appeal this man, Richard de Anstey, in that during the king's peace he did kill the said Marbell, who was your wife? I do. Well, Richard, what do you answer to this appeal now? I deny the charge, and for good or ill, I put myself upon the country. 
Uh, I also offer to my lord the king all goods and chattels of which I stand possessed. All my lands and estates pertaining to me, I offer no, him. Husband. I offer him for an inquest before legal knights, and let them determine whether I be guilty or not. By our lady, Master Richard, you ask a great deal. As a king's representative, I'm not sure that the king may grant so much. I am. The king has the power to Lucy and may do as he wills, as say, uh, dispensing his own justice. Now hop down, man, and give me the chair. Tom, you sit next to him. Observe well, Tom, how I do dispense my own justice. Your pupil will tutor you. I'm not criticizing the work you do. I am well satisfied with my Lord Richard. A good lord to me. What do you propose to do, sire? Hear the appeal myself. I sit here without prejudice to you. Well, it is a cholery case, something of a mystery. Will you be counseled? Yes. But not by you, with respect. Then by whom, sire? By them. You are all good, true, and free men. Well, who speaks? I do, sire. Name? Tarek Bollock, sir. Ronald of Royston Village. Hmm. Good. And the rest? Four from Royston, and twelve from the hundred of Anstey. Hmm. Well, call them forth, Tarek. Yes. Martin Carter. Uh, Odo the shoemaker, Hervik, Nicholas the Frenchman, Rainer Ward, Roland of Vermin Street. A long road, Master Terrick. What place? The street at Puckeridge, sir. Hmm? Brian, the son of that Roland, Albert the Lorimer, Serlo of Khan, Engel Ramus Cobber, and John Toyree. And that's all? Four of us burghers of Royston. You are all properly summoned. Yeah. And you know why you are here at Woodstock? We do, sir. We've been summoned before at another occasion. And you, Richard de Anstey, do you object to any of these? They are your peers. I bear them no grudge, and God willing, they bear me none. I have no objections. Good. Now, tell me all you know of this. But Richard entered into Mabel's land to reclaim it for himself. I saw her strike her. Richard began to bear threats. The Jews are dead. He owed a lot to me. I heard he would prevent her horses from carrying her messages. Richard would resist her at every turn. I feeling because of the inheritance. It surely seemed he bore Mabel a grudge. I saw Mabel choke once and gasp. Oh, no, there were no marks of blood. There was no blood. I saw no blood. I knew it. I knew it. No blood. No blood. Mabel was a sick woman, sick. She suffered a plethora, a surfeit of humours, an excess of choler. Hubert knows this. She's been stricken with it before. Well, Hubert? Well, I... I do not know. You know it well enough. Do you? You must answer. He persecuted her. She would be taken with a plethora, for her bile would rise at the sight of him. Did you lay hands upon her? Never. Nor resort to the devil? My lord, before God and all heaven, I did not. I'm convinced. You do not strike me as a dark, mystical man. Well, do Lucy. Not a judgment out of any lawyer's book I know of. How do you say? Judgment there must be given. Oh, true, my lord. 
Will you then pronounce it? Look. Nor do Lucy, will you? They will. You twelve. You're born witness here. How say you? What case is this Richard in? Be he guilty or no? Lord, no ordinary man may determine guilt. Be quiet, my lord. Well, what do you say? How can you advise us then? You, Tyrick. I hold him in suspicion of murder. It is murder, then. Well, so I think in the whole neighborhood, too. Hold him in suspicion. But is he guilty or no? Well, no man can say that. Only God may decide. Therefore, because he is in suspicion of this crime, it is adjudged he must clear himself. Well, in what form? You may choose. In what form shall the ordeal take? Ordeal. You must clear yourself, either by fire or by water, as God wills. I will undertake the ordeal by fire. fire. He has elected to clear himself by fire to bear the heated iron. You will go under your frank pledge into your own domain, and there in the church of Anstey, on when? Oh, how soon? Upon the feast of Saint Stephen. On Saint Stephen's Day in the church of Anstey. Oh. Divine providence, ordeals. Perhaps one day these men will judge another without this mumbo jumbo. I give up passing the day from all I think might be a valid in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I give up passing the day from all I think might be a valid in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let no man mend this fire further. You will take up the iron. You will walk nine paces, no more than nine, into the free air of heaven. You may then release the iron. I shall begin the collect. When I conclude, you may make your nine paces. Nomen Patri, Fili, et Spiritus Let no man speak, but pray to God Almighty that he may manifest the truth. Da nobis fasumus, Domini Domini, imitare quod colimus. Ut discamus et minicas delicere. Yes. Bear him to his hall. First light. I have warmed it for you. Thank you, Mistress. 
I am... I cannot give it in anything better. We have given away all our pretensions to prosperity. I'm sorry. I would it had been otherwise. What is one poor man's life against the honor of the king? The king is the state. And the honor of the state is the law. There is no law. He suffered the rigor of it. Because he trusted it. It was its interpretation that failed him. Has he waked? This is the third day. Nothing has passed his lips for three days. Oh, sweet Murray, pray for him. Send for the mass priest and then wake the household. sleeping. It's time, man. Time. The three days are over. It's time to learn the truth. Whether I be foul or clean. Yes. I feel nothing. Then we shall see. In nomine Patre, et no priest. Street, we thank. This is between God and him alone. I get it clean. Oh. So be it. Those of my household get you ready to leave. Well, are you satisfied? You are not, sir? Not entirely. One small fester, a dram of pus, that between guilt and innocence. Oh, God is satisfied well enough. You still believe in my guilt? It is not a question of guilt or innocence. Sire? The laws are sound enough. But the codes which embody them are outlandish and outmoded. And you would change them, sir? Nothing moves until it is pushed. The institutions of this realm, as they were given me by my royal ancestors, have become unreasonable and inflexible. The truth in them stifled. I must find a way to regenerate them, to make them breathe again. 
How else may a king govern? The king's will is the law, and you are the king. Yes, but not for always. Suppose the seat of government were to become weak and unstable. What then? No, Richard. It has been in my time, and it will be again. Richard, there must be a machine of state that functions whoever operates it. It's barely imaginable. You discerned it. And I am accounted a fool or a madman. If one man can see it, I'm determined to make others see it too. Well, Richard Yancey, it would seem you have everything you wanted. Your life, with Evans' approval, the de Sackville estates. You had your rights, now I demand mine. You owe me five years' rent for that land you have of me. Tom Beckett will see that you account for it if I don't, and he's more stubborn than you and I together. See so you pay him. You, more than any other man, know that this is justice. Wait. Hey! Paternoster. Quies in Caelis. Sanctificator nomen tuum. Adveniat regnum tuum. I will be done. Come on, husband. There's work to be done. 